the contrast of 1880 and the present is becoming a common sight. The problems of our cities are real, however, because of the heavy hand of old-fashioned design. It affects residential property. Much of our industrial space presents a special problem with old multi-story buildings. The elaborate pigeon roost we see here suggests that obsolescence stocks our apartment properties. Substantial and ornate buildings are to be found everywhere. Surely obsolescence should not cause despair. It is one of the results of America's rapid growth. It is the basic challenge to cities, however, and a twofold problem architectural obsolescence and narrow lot pattern. The truly dynamic American cities are those that are coming to grips with the problem of outmoded structures. Increasingly, we are seeing large-scale demolition as the first step in building modern cities. The need of the hour is to acquire pottage by merging narrow lots for a new start. Getting needed space in our cities for modern structures is the only way to meet the competitive force of growing suburban strength. Some of our demolition is an easy process because of much light wood construction. Often the substance of our urban structures is such as to resist the power of the demolition hammer. As a people, however, we are steadfast as we tackle problems and the hammer of demolition will be sure to swing with determination. In this jet age, events move fast, faster indeed than we sometimes realize. And our progress is certain to be steady as we clear away the structures that block progress. Obsolescence runs through all types of property, including some of our finest mansion homes. These too will bow to demolition, and as they pass from the American scene, strategic land will be cleared for new use. To be fully dynamic, the American city must now accommodate the automobile. This is the vital factor of our new age. The poor little parking meter is not by itself a solution to automobile problems. The forward-looking city is conscious of the automobile and automobile traffic as key factors. It is responding by providing adequate, well-located parking facilities, often building skyward to create the urgently needed space. Many cities have melted the problem by building underground. We are applying full ingenuity to the task and with good results. Here we see self-parking. Self-parking is accomplished in the San Francisco downtown garage by an ingenious use of concentric ramps, making it possible for the motorist to park and remove his own car. Reduced operating expenses result in low rates, $15 per month being very low for a large city. Also, there is free parking under a validation stamp plan with cooperating merchants. Hotels are striving to provide for automobile registry and even attached garage storage. The El Cortez Hotel of San Diego, alert to the automobile, constructed a motel right across the street so that now it offers both hotel and motel accommodations. A clever plan was worked out in the downtown store area of Salt Lake City. Here, a minimum of valuable business frontage was used for entering and leaving a parking garage. This is ingenious. This plan puts the garage in the rear on less valuable land. How vital such pottage can be. Space is a vital need, too, for new downtown stores. See the power of adequate commercial land. Here, a full block in downtown Salem, Oregon, is devoted to a new and attractive Meyer and Frank store. What centralizing strength can flow from such a constructive development? And there is even an attached garage for the automobile age. In the last analysis, the city cannot be dynamic without adequate residential accommodations. Land for residential use is a most urgent need. In Kansas City, Astute private enterprise has made real achievement in residential construction on Quality Hill near downtown. It is imperative that we think of the city as a way of life, with fundamental accent on residential properties. In this view, we must be continually combating residential deterioration. Property owners must be vigorously encouraged to fix up. 
Even the most modest homes will present an attractive and harmonious appearance if properly maintained. We have the problem, therefore, of code enforcement. Standards must be set and maintained because the deterioration of one property can adversely affect others. Every possible help must be given to those who seek to live well in our cities. They should be considered as preferred city residents, entitled to full residential enjoyment. American ingenuity is also being displayed in residential property. Here is a cooperative apartment house on a narrow 30 foot by 60 foot lot. Each floor is offered for sale as a separate residence. Thus, an owner acquires a ranch house, so to speak, in a convenient downtown location. The concept of cooperative ownership has been growing and will no doubt be greatly expanded during the years ahead. The city, therefore, clearly remains dynamic under the force of constant change. The pulse of progress is steady. Some properties are rushing into existence and others are rushing into discard. Alert eyes know it is inevitable that properties like these must go. It is not surprising, therefore, to return and see their removal underway. In America, we should not be impatient. All problems cannot be tackled at once. It is also new that we have hardly had time to remove the cobblestones from some of our city streets. Indeed, if you can remember the Model T, you have lived since most of the revolutionary changes in real estate. And as we go steadily forward, we see aluminum skyscrapers and stainless steel. The introduction of metals in real estate itself is revolutionary. It is difficult to believe that America is a land only recently removed from the log cabin, from primitive shelter. It is good that the state of Oregon has placed a statue of the pioneer woodsman on its capital, a beautiful reminder that the wilderness of this land was reduced to a dynamic civilization with the simple ax. What amazing achievement there has been in America. The problems of rapid growth are real, but not insurmountable. Surely we must never construe density as a deterrent to city life. In many dramatic ways, we are moving in on obsolescence. We see in this setting new apartments introducing a new life. And note the proximity to office buildings, an exciting new city trend. Beauty in commercial architecture is another new revolutionary force helping our cities. Frequently we find deep setback with trees. The introduction of attractiveness in commercial real estate results in a new harmony between commercial and residential. This is revolutionary because in the past, business property was often considered repugnant. Surely the pleasing harmony here is a constructive force for good in building modern cities. Let us summarize now by looking at St. Louis. First, what is St. Louis? Well, in terms of urban problems, it means broad leadership, chamber of commerce, architects, city planners, realtors, home builders, contractors, mortgage lenders, government officials. In short, a cross-section of community leaders must unite for action. The first step, of course, is urgently needed plottage. That has been started in St. Louis. In the use of the cleared land, St. Louis has made a highly desirable step in having an apartment house as an initial structure. Its close proximity to downtown office buildings gives accent to the exciting current trend toward living close in. The comforts, convenience, and even the health of living in a small world are being recognized by increasing numbers of people. Many people are desiring to walk to work again. Such stimulating activity sparks further effort, and St. Louis is now cleaning up existing buildings to tone up the entire downtown area. The apartments, however, are the most significant, because there can be no enduring city vitality unless we provide for full city life. Lest you conclude that we are considering only large cities, let's look at very small ones. Here is some quaint obsolescence in tiny Columbus, Indiana, common, of course, to cities large and small. Leadership in Columbus refused to despair about obsolescence. 
a renowned architect was retained to create new beauty. The results are inspirational. What a great contribution our design professions are making and can continue to make in our urban life. Constructive activity was extended into the downtown business area. Here we see a typical American business street as developed during the horse and buggy era. A civic-minded family of bankers decided to construct a new bank using the finest of architectural guidance. The result, a breath of new life on an obsolete street. A truly beautiful corner with contemporary style, deep setback, and trees. It is really a great contribution to community betterment. People are well served. The problems of the automobile were fully realized and planned for with the very latest in drive-in facilities. The contrast of the old and a refreshing new achievement suggest that the pulse of healthy change exists also in small communities. Another exciting observation is found in the small community of Bartlesville, Oklahoma, the now famous Price Tower by Frank Lloyd Wright. For a small town, this building is quite amazing because it has offices and apartments on the same floor. Many people are putting strong accent on convenience, even in small communities. Here certainly is another contribution of greatness and in a small city. Moreover, it is a law of real estate that constructive dynamic effort sparks other activity. It is not surprising, therefore, to find collateral work going on in the area around the tower. Further demolition and rebuilding are stimulated by every constructive achievement. Thus, the benefits spread. The story, moreover, is the same for any community, large or small. Exciting change is going on everywhere. Here, for example, is the tallest building in America to be demolished to start over. Surely we shall not demolish all our large buildings, but the lesson is clear. We live in a day of bold planning. From now on, we shall be seeing much demolition, the first step in making our cities better places to work, better places to live. It will take great effort and real leadership, but as a people, we can do the jobs. And as we see here the rubble of demolition at the feet of Columbus, let us remember that in many ways the continent is still before us. Our follow-up at this point shows Columbus standing in majestic survey of the most important dynamic urban trend, the office building and the apartment building going hand in hand to demonstrate the convenience of city life. And so the city remains dynamic. Surely, if we can recapture the courage and forward-looking spirit of the discoverers and pioneers of America, building better cities will be assured.